purely as a precaution. We'll bring a tow rope. Basically, I'm going to be standing up a wee bit, so I'll lie down with that bit a little bit. Warm gloves, one careful user, a bit scuffed. Spares, when it gets wet and cold and nasty on the way home, and over the gloves in the back pocket. What's up with the rubbish bag, Kev? Can you care to explain that a little bit? Um, this is like the interior light that ladies' handbags should all have. There's nothing worse than trying to find your stuff in a black bag or falling out of the pannier, so here we go. And anything that's broken at the end of the day, it's a Harriker District Council official rubbish bag, straight out. Okay, a lot of these. Hand warmers, you peel them open, gives you seven hours of heat, keep your hands warm. Same with the feet, although last time I used these, they did not make it into my shoes. We won't go any further. And in my jacket pocket, I have what's considered the uh, most comprehensive toolkit money can buy. <laughs> Cell phone. What we do is we put in the number of our local dealers, and if we're in trouble, we give them a call. We're just about to head off on Epic Events' first adventure ride. We're going to do about 474 k's around Taupo. And we're on two very unlikely bikes. Honda's latest Cross Tourer and Yamaha's Super Tenere. Probably expect to see them more on the road, but we fitted knobbly tyres to them. Loaded them up with luggage. We're going to see how they go a bit out of their depth. So we've inputted the routes. So here we go. Afternoon one, afternoon two, morning one, morning two. So. Click on morning one, we'll take a look at where we're going to go. There we go, and each one of those little flags is a waypoint, so the GPS will tell us where to go, where to turn, which track to go up to, and hopefully won't get us lost. Getting nicely rugged up, as I think it's going to be about minus two in Taupo, so that'll be nice. How cold is it, Kev? That's scraping ice off the bike, as we speak. 474 kilometres around Lake Taupo. Currently half past six in the morning at about minus two degrees. And there's thick ice on all the motorbikes. It's still dark, yet many are leaving already to go and hit the trails. So this is going to be interesting. So you're looking forward to the ride, Graham? Oh, most definitely. Why and, not? This and, is what we're here for. And is your bike big enough? Oh, I think it's actually probably a, probably a bit overkill actually, but um, we'll give it a shot anyway. Let's have a look what Graham's riding. Hey Greg, can you push the Good morning Paul. Good morning. Are you pleased with your first uh, your first event? Excellent, well, excellent. <laughs> it's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> what more could you ask for? A little, le a little less frost on the seats. No, the ground's not even white. No. Uh, are you looking forward to the ride? Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> what are you, uh, what are you riding? Oh, no, I was going to throw it but I'm sorry. Very good, very good. What is that? Are you, uh, are you GPSing or are you route booking? No, route booking. And, happy with that? Yeah. Don't give it a go, eh? Hey? <laughs> First time I've here, really? At least we know the We know way. the way back. We know the way home. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. Finally, as the sun come up, we are off. It's a gorgeous morning, cool and crisp in Taupo's awesome winter fashion.
part way through the morning, it was holding at minus two degrees, it was white everywhere. And the first coffee stop was a welcome chance for those that have a little bit of caffeine for the system, and those without the luxury of heated grips, holding tight, warm their hands up, all good. After a jaunt through the forestry, the riders emerged at Oakuri Dam. Spectacular day for sightseeing, then it was off towards Kinlick for the next forestry section. This is how we see where we're going. Waypoints on the GPS combined with a nicely stuck on map. How's your morning been so far? Bloody good. Pretty awesome. What was a lot? Frost going on. Yeah. <laughs> cold. It's cold when you get in those bits where it was foggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back on those trails, it was still crunchy underfoot. It was absolutely awesome riding. Nice free flowing tracks, and on the big 1200s, we were making pretty good time. Riding through the forestry with white on the banks, but the frost was just starting to harden up again in the afternoon. You could have been anywhere in the world. Got all sorts of bikes, all sorts of riders, starting off with a little 250 trail bikes, right up to Paul on the Honda's 270 kilo Cross Tourer or VFR 1200X, complete with panniers. Big bikes were a little bit more physical getting through the tight sections, as you can imagine, but really came into their own on the forestry roads. We had fit knobbly tyres to them, and to be fair, they were amazingly good. We were able to go there and back doing 800 odd Ks on the weekend, no worries at all. We popped back out into civilization at Fokamaru, where everyone had some lunch and stretched their legs. The cafe was ready for us, but there was a busload of tourists who showed up at exactly the same time. There were some trail sections for those who are a bit more adventurous, but we chose not to take our 1200s on some of those, like this one that Mr. Delatour plunged straight into. I don't think we would have made it across somehow. where the big 1200s were more comfortable, the open trails, progress was really good. They were surprisingly stable. On the tyres we had, you'd be fine in most places, plus you get to tour parts of the country that most people would never see on their road bike or in their family sedan. If you're wondering what that little yellow light is on the dash, 
Paul decided to get rid of the traction control while he's trundling through the forestry, doing the V4 drive up the hills. On our way past the geographical centre of the North Island, we thought it'd be rude not to stop, so we got off our bikes, walked a couple hundred metres to find this little monument there. Back in 1961, it was discovered that this was the geographical centre of the North Island, not only by maths, but some guy actually made a curved model of the North Island and suspended it, and that proved to be the exact point. You've got to remember, it was the 60s. Yeah, where's the motorbikes when you need them? Mr. Detour paying homage to the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's a sort of some sacred monument That's here right, that we yeah. down at, eh? Well, we're on our way home from the epic events, long way round. It's a 450 kilometre adventure ride, it involves tar seal, gravel roads, some trail sections. It's big bike friendly, there's a few challenging loops there if you've got a smaller bike. We've got another couple of hundred k's to get home, but that's what these things are all about. Absolutely magic way to see the country. This is places that you're not going to see if you're on your regular road bike or in a car. Well, this is the inaugural epic events adventure ride, and I must say they did a stunning job. They had the, the route on notes for you, but they also had a downloadable route map on a GPS, so you could just plug it in, follow it. How good is a GPS system? Well, even we managed to make it around without getting lost. We've definitely been bitten by the adventure bug. I must say it's great fun, and there's a really neat mix of people. Maybe that's the way you want to see the country as well. Give it a crack. <laughs>